subject this morning, and for the next few weeks, we're going to be looking at uh, the culture of the kingdom. Um, I'm going to try my best to discipline myself and stay um, some subdued so that I can get what I need to say out. And so I'm going to risk boring you uh, and not entertaining you uh, this morning so that um, 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 I can get, I can teach what needs to be said in here. Does that make sense? So if you stayed up too late, you might go to sleep on this one, but you can get on YouTube and listen to it later, and you got the note sheet there for you. And if you don't fight it. If some of you knew what you looked like when you fought sleep, you wouldn't fight it. Just go on and go to sleep. <laughs> just go on and go. If you knew what, what you looked like when you, yes, just let it go. Just go on. It's all right. They went to sleep on Jesus. I assume y'all can go to sleep on me too. I mean, his home, his, his homeboys went to sleep on him. And, and so it's all good. My feelings won't be hurt. So I say, uh, Dewan, will you do me a favor? You, uh, well, hold on, because what I'm about to, who knows the church pantry really well? The, who's familiar with the church pantry in the kitchen? Any, give me, I'm going to throw my shoe at somebody. Can you do me a favor, sis? I need you to do me a favor. Could you go in there and find a big thing of salt and a glass, I need a, gla a big thing of salt, a glass of water, and an empty glass. Lord, what is he going to do? We don't know. We're going to be talking about kingdom culture for the next several weeks. For the next several weeks, we're going to be talking about kingdom culture. Now, let me do some defining here. So, so that y'all know what I'm talking about. Some of y'all are just jumping in on this, um, and you're a visitor, or you just started attending our church, and I, I want to be clear, and I'm going to take my time, so I'm going to risk your comfort zone on how long a sermon should be this morning, and if you got to go, just go. You don't, it's hard to hurt my feelings. It's hard. Some of you get your feelings hurt really easy, and I'm praying for you, and you pray for me that I'll show some empathy, because, you, you, you know, you know, your little jokes don't hurt my feelings. They used to call me the N-word. DJ kept on trucking, baby. I'd go to Burlington, and they would be calling me the N-word, Bradford. 1995, and they would be chanting it. They'd go, you know, and they would just chant it, and I said, I'm still going to skill 40. You can call me what you want, but I'm going for 40 tonight. It takes a lot to hurt brother's feelings, so... I'm, I'm going to try to be empathetic to you this morning in, in your time, but I really don't care how you feel about how long a message should be this morning. So, so you just get on up, and God bless you, and, and may he keep you while we're absent one from another. Because I know some of y'all know the Chiefs is on. I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. I'm a Cowboys fan, so I don't have to care about football. I don't have to care. <laughs> Y'all clapping, but we're terrible. <laughs> it's a terrible thing going on around here. But so, so, so I want to give some definitions. I don't refer to myself as a Christian, okay? I want to be clear. I don't call myself a Christian. Why, Pastor? Because anybody in this country is allowed to call themselves a Christian. As a matter of fact, we have a, an epidemic in this country that people can talk about Christianity and never talk about the leader. I watch these videos on YouTube and people are saying, this is powerful. This is powerful. How, how, how can it be powerful if you don't talk about the leader of the most powerful movement ever? If you're a Buddhist in here, if you're a Muslim in here, I'm glad you're here worshiping with us. God bless you. But I'm just going to let you know, find a better leader than Jesus was. I wish you would. Show me who has been better. Man's been dead for 2,000 years. 2,000 years. And his movement's just rolling. His principle's just rolling. So I am not a Christian, because I don't know what Christianity even means. Christian, the word Christian is found in Scripture one time, and it was a word used to make fun of us. They were trying to label, some people believe, Roman soldiers. They weren't following Caesar. They were following Christ. So they called the Roman soldiers that followed Christ Christians, okay? And it was the enemies of Christ that were making fun of Christians, making fun of followers of Christ. So the word comes from a sense of, it's a negative word, but I don't, because I don't know what it means. Anybody can say they're Christian. There's still like 65% of Americans believe they're Christians. And I'm saying, how? How is that even possible? So I call myself a kingdom citizen. I'm not from this world. When I gave my life to Christ, it caused me to be born again. I'm not born from here. I'm going to a place where I'm going to see my relationship with Christ become fulfilled. So my utmost love is to be with Jesus. My utmost passion is to try to do his will. Okay? And when we get to heaven, we believe that's all that's going to be going on there. Okay? All right? So when I go, when we, I, there might be fishing up in heaven. Hey, praise the Lord. If y'all get to, if y'all, if you, those of you who love to bow hunt, get to bow hunt up there, God bless you. But I don't care if there's not bow hunting. I don't care if there's not fishing. I don't care if there's no Netflix. 
I don't care if there's no football. I, to the point, I don't care. Y'all think I care. I honestly, the only reason why I care is because you care and I don't want to seem weird. I don't, I watch two football games a year, okay? I don't care. I don't care about this stuff. I care about Christ crucified in the cross. That's all I care about. And y'all think I'm playing. That's all I care about. I have no affections in anything temporary. I go by the phrase, easy come. Okay, so I'm a kingdom citizen. Follow Christ. It's Jesus. What's the answer to every question to me? Jesus. What's the meaning of every, of every definition? Jesus. So I'm talking about kingdom. What is kingdom? Kingdom is not a specific place. It's not a location. Kingdom is where God rules, okay? Kingdom is where God rules, okay? So when you accept Christ and say Jesus is Lord and Jesus comes into your heart, God now rules, therefore kingdom is going on. So if you said yes to Jesus and you said he's Lord and now you take your mind and your emotions and your will and you give them to Jesus, when you do that, kingdom starts taking place through you. It's not a place, it's in you, Jesus said in Luke chapter 17. Kingdom is in you. So wherever you go, kingdom goes. So when you get on the plane, you don't go, well, I hope the pilot and I hope there's no, the kingdom of God is back in you because I got the rule of God in my heart. So I bring kingdom with me everywhere I go. So I'm not at work waiting for somebody to come in the room to brighten my day. Well, I hope, I hope Teresa don't come. Teresa can come, she can not come. When I come, kingdom's coming with me because God is ruling my life. Are we tracking? So I'm not waiting for somebody special to come into my life in regards to that because I bring kingdom with me everywhere I go. But there's a culture to the kingdom. There's a way that God responds. There's a way that God acts. There's the things that God believes. So this, this morning and for the next several weeks, we're gonna be talking about this culture of the kingdom, okay? The beliefs, the actions, the ways, what does God think about it? What does God say about it? What does God do about it? What's the spirit behind it? What's the motivation? I, I don't argue, I don't think, if, you're, if you have last days eschatology, if you have post-millennial and all these other terms, I don't, the question is, how does that help you love Jesus more? What good is your theology if it doesn't cause you to love Jesus more? We're going to sit in here and talk about how at any point Jesus is going to come back and all we talk about is, you know, in the last days and the Antichrist and, and, the, and Syria is going to come and the rest is going to come. I love that stuff. I'll get lost in it, but I have to check myself from time to time and go, how does this help me love Jesus more? So if you're a Calvinist or Reformed, great. But how does that help you love Jesus more? If you are Arminian and you believe in free will, how does that help you love Jesus more? If you believe that God loves everybody and you love everybody and you just think anything goes, you better show me as a pastor, because I'm coming for you. How does that help you love Jesus more? Because it's not good theology if it doesn't raise your affections for Jesus and for others. It's terrible theology if it doesn't lead to raising your affections for Jesus and raising your love for others. Amen. Well, I'm right. Well, that's not what it's about, you being right. I don't trust you (laughs) if all you care about is being right. I don't trust those people. That's a cult. I'm going to say it again. What's their definition of cult? I always have to be right. That's why why I'm not a Republican or Democrat. They're cults to me. Yep, lost y'all, didn't I? Because you follow a donkey, another one follows the elephant. I'm not following neither of them. I'm a kingdom citizen. Kingdom of God is back in me. Kingdom of God is back in me. Kingdom culture. For, well, I'm in trouble. I said, I done, I done killed their bail. See, I done messed with modern day bail. As long as you don't say nothing about Bill O'Reilly, we'll be all right, Pastor. <laughs> like somebody's got me in their sights, right? He says something about Bill O'Reilly. <laughs> I, I don't care about no lost emails what is the kingdom doing we are what matters I'm going to say it again I'm, I'm, trying, I'm trying to purposely chase some of y'all away there's all kinds of churches you're going to heaven I don't need you here with me if you think it's about the republican right religious right if you think it's about that I'm, I'm going to start counting exits for some of y'all in the name of Jesus because we don't have time for that 
Do you think it's about, well, we're liberal and we're just going to dance to the fairies and everybody can just smoke wheat and just run around, do whatever they want, whenever they want, and it doesn't matter? I'm going to run that out of here. That's not the kingdom. We serve God. He's our Lord. He's in charge. We follow his doctrines. I'm telling you, don't mess with me on this. This is why they don't let me preach once a month because I'll jack things up. All right? <laughs> so I don't care. Get on my nerves. Somebody says, DJ, you do Black Lives Matter. No! Kingdom matters. Kingdom matters. You know, run around here with this junk. So I don't care anymore. I, that's where I'm at. By the way, deep ends tonight at six o'clock. <laughs> we also have a t-shirt fundraiser going on. So if you get a chance, go out there and order a t-shirt. <laughs> oh, something else. October the 1st, the first Sunday in October, we're having church under the pavilion. So if you come here, you're going, you're going to be just sitting here by yourself. Some of you might like that, but that's all right. We're going to be outside. We want to take the kingdom outside on that Sunday. Roger Cooper's going to be in town leading worship that Sunday. And we're going to preach, and we're going to have biscuits and gravy that Sunday. Free. Did you hear that? Free. So October the 4th, 1st Sunday, October. Let me get that to calm me down before I run. Sunday, October, the, is it 5th? The first Sunday of October. 4th. God bless you. So what's the first kingdom principle I want to get to before I just start tearing stuff up? I, Mom, I'm trying to be good so bad. But if you knew what God has been saying, y'all, something prophetic has happened in this house. If you've been coming every week, see, some of y'all don't know because you come once every six weeks. I'm not knocking that, but you're missing it. I'm not trying to make you feel guilty or feel bad. I get it. I mean, you had to come look for me too if I wasn't the pastor. <laughs> I mean, I get it. I get Sunday morning sleeping, but something crazy has been going on in here. Something prophetic. God has been speaking on Sunday, and it's been, I've been getting confirmation Sunday night and into Monday morning. Something, this is not business as usual, Southeast Kansas. We're not, this is not business as usual. People are getting saved that ain't supposed to get saved. I'm seeing some people get saved that I, I had given up on. I'm not going to lie to you. I didn't even stop praying for them. And they just randomly came into the church, and you know who you are. And they're just like, I'm done. I'm, I'm ready to follow Jesus. This is some crazy stuff. I'm just not going to tell everybody's business because it's a small town. But we got people getting saved and doing things I ain't never, I ain't, I, I've never seen before in a long time. This is crazy stuff. Some of you are just coming in business as usual. Give me my three songs, my two points in a poem. Make me feel good. God said, I'm, I'm moving, and you're going to miss it. And the first thing, look at your neighbor and say, honor the point. Look at your neighbor real quick. Tell him, honor the point. Honor the point. Honor the point. Honor the point. What's the point? Jesus is the point. So you can put that up. There you go. Honor the point. Go to Mark chapter 6, I think it is. Yes, Mark 6. Mark 6. Go to Mark 6. That's really small writing. That's on purpose, Connie. I'm trying to provoke some of y'all to bring your Bible. <laughs> Pull it on out. Whip it on out. Get them pages out so y'all don't think I'm making stuff up. See it for yourself. It's okay to come to church with the Bible. I'm not judging you if you didn't. But every once in a while it's okay because it's going to be almost Sunday schoolish in here. It's going to be almost Sunday schoolish in here. I forgot to bring Sunday school to some of y'all. Some of you are going to think that I'm trying to condemn you. That's not what I'm going to Don't let the Satan leverage this to condemnation. We do want conviction. Conviction causes correction. If I get a conviction, I'll start making some changes. If you're feeling condemned or not worthy, that's not what we're going for. We don't want Satan to do that. That's not the goal this morning. Now, here's the thing. I'm going to be honest with you. I turned this sword on myself before I brought it to you. So I'm standing here spiritually bleeding, okay? Because <laughs> the Lord showed me some areas of my life where I'm way off the mark in this. So I'm not standing up here pontificating like I've arrived and y'all haven't yet, okay? And see, Mark was with me last night. He knows I haven't arrived, okay? So that's not what I'm doing. Don't let Satan do those things. It's not what's going on, all right? Look at this. Jesus left that part of the country and returned with his disciples to Nazareth, his hometown. Jesus is going home, baby. Class reunion, going home. The next Sabbath, he began teaching in the synagogue. He's a rabbi. He can do that. And many who heard him were what? Amazed. This man's preaching a the word. They asked where did he get all this wisdom and the power to perform such miracles? He go to school for this? Is there a school of healing? <laughs> school of miracles? Then they scoff. Look at that. They just admit it. He's doing miracles. What do they do? They scoffed. That's where we're at in this country about God and the things of God. They mock God now. They're not just saying they're atheists. They're mocking and scoffing at God now. 
They scoff at this. I want you to see what you're at. It's the kingdom. Nothing new is going on. So you don't have to freak out. You don't need to see 40 emails. I don't know what's going on with our country. They did it in Jesus' time when he was here. Jesus is not here in the flesh. You can surely expect they're going to do it now. Amen. That don't mean we don't do nothing, but I want you to wear. I want you to wear. It's kind of like that person is like, they start testifying for the devil. You know, he's stealing, killing, and destroying. Well, Jesus said he was. That's what he does. You know, the Lord pray for us. He's stealing, killing, and destroying. I'm like, well, that's what he's going to do, sweetie. That's what he's going to do. They're scoffing at the ministry of Jesus, and he's here in the flesh. They scoff at him. Somebody agree with me in the back. He's just a carpenter. All right, they're looking at him. Jesus was a carpenter. They're like, he's not the son of God. He's just a carpenter. His, I know his mama and them. Mama and them is what we say in the hood. Mama and them. Mama and them. Mama and them. I know all of them. I know his aunties, you know, aunties. We, used to, we call them aunties. My aunt. All right, I, we, we, I know his brothers. You know, wouldn't that be something? You went to jail with one of Jesus' brothers, and here he comes talking about he Jesus. He talking about he the Messiah. You was in jail with his brother. Man, I know his brother. We was in jail together. They, they start, we know James, Joseph, Judas, Simon. We was there. We, his mama cleaned my house. His daddy and him built my house. Now he's going to tell us he's the son of God. Really? They're scoffing this. They were deeply offended and refused to believe in him. Deeply offended. You can keep him in here, sir. It's all good. It doesn't bother me. For real. You can keep him in here. Deeply offended and refused to believe in him. Now look what Jesus says in the fourth verse. Then Jesus told them, a prophet is honored everywhere except in his hometown. <laughs> That's why pastors get mad at their congregation when they don't, they just won't listen to me. I don't, you, you're at home, brother. They ain't, you know. Bring somebody else in, tell them to say it. They'll, they'll listen then. That's why you see somebody up here all the time, not just DJ. Because I know once I start talking after a while, it's like, okay, we hear you. Oh God, we hear you. Please, Lord. All right. And somebody's done text you, we're at El Pablito. Those where y'all at. Well, the Christian church is already out. <laughs> living, you know y'all get nervous when the living word beats us at El Pablito's. Then y'all start sending me emails. Like, the living word beat us? DJ went too long. <laughs> he preached longer than Milton. He's not the senior pastor now. Hold on. All right. Is he a prophet is honored everywhere except at home. Now, when I go to St. Louis, when I go to Charlotte, oh, man. Oh, they just sit there. More, 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 more. Y'all go like, hurry up, hurry up, Chiefs. Cow and you Cowboys fans, I'll be ashamed of yourself. You should be in here at the altar praying. It's what y'all need to be doing. <laughs> Talking about you want to go watch the Cowboys. You should be in here praying for Romo. All right? So I get it. I understand it. Now, on among his relatives, his own family. My wife, I used to make fun of him. We all be in there arguing. I remind him, I'm anointed. <laughs> yeah, don't owe me. Everybody else listens to me. What are y'all doing? Don't you go, you get up just because you're a leader in the church, don't mean your family's gonna listen to you. You don't get to go to the family reunion and tell everybody what to do. Oh, you help in the church now, Dewan. Everybody sit down, I'm gonna pray. Okay, who do you think you are? We grew up with you. No, you ain't gonna try to tell us something. Oh, what you gonna tell us? Oh, you a prophet now. Oh, okay. Okay. You wrote a book about tapping the keg. Now you a prophet. Oh, oh, oh. Your family will bust you out, won't they? You get saved and excited. Want to go tell your family? They'll kill that quick. Oh, okay. Andy Stanley said that, huh? Oh, we should read that? Oh, really? Girl, they're looking to be buried more, four more months. I ain't reading that book on marriage from them. Get used to it. <laughs> Jesus wasn't listened to by his family, so you need to get used to it. Rick, just let it go, brother. Just let it go. They ain't listening. <laughs> they ain't listening to you. Like, oh, talking to us. Talking about honor the point. He just cussed two days ago. Oh, don't y'all dare. I'll throw my shoe at all of y'all. Some of y'all cussed before you came in this morning. Stubbed your toe. Woke up cussing. It's your nerve. And because of their unbelief, he couldn't do any. Look at this. Because of their unbelief, he couldn't do anything. Any, because of their unbelief. Yeah, study that. Go home and mess with that. Wait, I thought God can do anything. <laughs> I thought all things are possible. And we stop there, but it says, to him that believeth. So that's why you got to be careful with all these funny doctrines Everybody ain't getting in, folks. For God so loved the world 
John 3, 16, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth. Amen. Look at some of y'all. I done lost it. Yep, there they go. Done lost that group. It's all right. We're we going to just be me and you here, bro. I know you're new, but it'll be me and you when it's all said and done. Believeth. He said, I couldn't do any miracles there. He said, except to place his hands on a few sick people and heal them. And look what the Bible says. He was amazed at their unbelief. In the Greek, that means to be surprised. Like Jesus is showing us how he operates in his humanity. He knows everything, but his humanity was surprised at their unbelief. He's doing miracles in front of them, but they couldn't get over how they thought they knew him, that they couldn't accept who he was because they thought they knew him. They couldn't accept who he was because they thought they knew him. They couldn't honor him. So I want you to do an evaluation this morning. How well are you honoring the point? Jesus is the point. Are you honoring the point with your life right now? Or are you like, maybe the lack of power that we want to see at work in our life is because we don't honor him with our lives. And maybe we'll see that power when we start honoring God with our lives. Honor the point. Christ is the point. How well are you honoring Christ in your everyday life right now? How well are you believing him? How's your attitude? What about your affections? Your conversation? Those are the four I want you to examine this morning. Where's your belief at? Will you get that slide for me, Connie? Where's your belief at? Where's your attitude at concerning Christ? Where are your affections? When I say affections, I'm talking about your mind, your emotions, and your will. The way that you think about Christ. The way your affections, the way that you feel about Christ, and the way that you follow Christ, your affections, and your conversation. That was the one I got in the most trouble for this week. <laughs> Not, the Lord told me, it's not what you say sometimes, DJ. It's your tone that's not my nature. You know how you can say something with a funky tone. You know what I'm talking about. Your tone is funky. You know, you just say it with it. Well, well then go find out. I got that bad. I got that bad. <laughs> just a strange tone. And the enemy plays the marriages off of tones and body language alone. Any marriage researcher tell you that. You get on this, start studying marriage, tones and body language. No, he didn't look at me like that. Okay, it'll be next Christmas before you touch me, buddy. Next Christmas. <laughs> oh, I'm going to get real with you no more. No more playing church. No more playing church. You know how that is. Next Christmas before you touch this body, buddy. Talk to me like that. He's playing us with our conversation, with our tones and our body language, not just, and our content, and our content, but look at how dishonorable we are now to one another. Look at YouTube and how we laugh at other people's experience. There's very little honor. And some of you older people won't let us honor you. We can't help you from the car. We can't help, don't you hold that door open for me. We're trying to honor you. And you're so busy, so the enemy has leveraged your age so bad, you won't let people honor you. Talking about everybody disrespects their elders. We try to respect you. We called you ma'am, that was wrong. We called you by a title, don't come by a title. We called you by your name, well I'm your elder. We don't know what to heck to call you, you won't, you won't take it. We have to honor one another. My prayer is the spirit of honor will hit this room. So when you come in here, we honor you. Right, Harley? You got tats, honor you. Gauges in your ear, we honor you. Your drawers are down, I'm gonna ask you to pull them up. <laughs> but I'm still gonna honor you. I'm gonna ask you to pull them drawers up. That's just a pet peeve of my pray for me. I'm like, what's wrong with the boy's drawers? How's he, and they be hooping in that too. Drawers down, how you hoop with your drawers like that? You know, I'm like, Lord, bring back MC Hammer pants. At least you have to pull them up. <laughs> I used to wear my brother's MC Hammer pants all the time. Honoring each other. Honoring one another. See, honoring each other. Let's get into this. Can we get into this? Did, did I, did, I got so much in my brain, I just want to slap people. <laughs> like, I honor you. <laughs> I, I just, it is, have you ever been, when was the last time you, you felt honored? 
I don't want you just to focus on giving honor. I want you to focus on receiving honor. Hear me. Hear me. Receive it. Receive it. When your kids go, hey, dad, mom, love you. Awesome. I'm so glad you're in my life. Receive that honor. Oh, no, you don't. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to come to my house. That's how I get. You know, when we start talking about giving, we're really saying honor God with your wealth. Not, not just when you come on Sunday morning. We're talking about Proverbs 39 says you honor with your wealth. We're not, we're not talking about coming on Sunday morning. We're talking about throughout the day, you're saying you wake up intensely and go, Lord, how can I honor you with my pocketbook today? Oh, Lord, help us. I mean, I, once you talk about money in church today, it's done. It's done. I didn't say honor DJ. I said honor the Lord with your wealth. So I'm not asking you for your money. I know some of y'all ain't going to give me your money. I'm not asking you for money. I mean, but you, it's one D, one J. Dot the I. <laughs> if you do decide, do that. I'm going to read to you 1 Peter 2.17. I'm still talking about honor, and I'm going to get into my four points. I'm telling you, I'm taking my time, so you, you have my permission. The Chiefs come on, what, noon? I understand. Go see your boys. I will not judge you. These people may judge you. I won't. All right? Because I'm thinking about going to Billy Sims later on this afternoon, but you, you go see the Chiefs. I understand. I'm taking my time through this. I'm not rushing, so... 1 Peter 2.17 says this, respect everyone, shout everyone. everyone. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. So, so I disconnect. Here, yeah, raise your hand if you're in high school. Raise your hand if you're in high school. My high schoolers, listen to me with your hands raised. Listen to me. I want y'all to disconnect from disrespect. Keep your hand up. I want y'all to disconnect from disrespect. Did you hear me? What did I just say? Disconnect from disrespect. Put your hands down. So if your friends start disrespecting somebody, you just disconnect. I would tell the adults that, but they can't do that. So I'm telling the young people that. Y'all can't do that. Y'all can't. You just have to tell me about how you feel about Obama. You just can't. You just have to disrespect them. You just have to. You just have to. It's in you. You just have to be disrespectful. You just have to. That is not kingdom culture, though. We honor the position. I can throw 20 scriptures out here. You have no scripture that you can give me that says it's okay to disrespect our president. I don't like him, but I'm not going to disrespect him in a sense of calling him what some of y'all call him. It's not acceptable in the kingdom, folks. So once the, Chris, once they start talking like that, I just disconnect. I just go like this. Mm -mm. I'm not participating. They think I'm for that. I'm not for any of them. I'm a conspiracy theorist. <laughs> I'm not for any of them. But I just disconnect. Derek, I just go. I'm not participating. People start talking about their wives. Well, my old lady this, and my wife is this. And you go into the break room, disconnect. I'm like, y'all call y'all's wife old lady and still got your teeth? How's that happen? Like, where are these women at? I just disconnect, Billy. I just step away. Disconnect from this. He said, respect everyone. Now, the culture says they have to earn respect. That's not kingdom. That's not kingdom according to Scripture. We respect everyone. I respect people I disagree with. They're humans. I can at least respect their humanity. I disagree. I don't agree. I don't agree. I don't agree with Planned Parenthood. That's just me. I don't agree with that. I don't agree with it. But I still have to show them some respect. I have to honor them. You understand what I'm saying? Show everyone respect. Love the family of believers like Adam was saying. We love each other. We honor each other. We love each other in here. And then he goes and says, he goes on to say this, fear God. That means to honor God in the Greek. Fear God, honor God, and respect the king. So not only does he say respect everyone, he says respect the king. And that's what they called it in their culture. Ours is the president, guys. I know some of y'all can't take this. You can't take it. He's on his way out. Let it go. He's almost done. He's almost done. You just let it go. We got to respect. Kingdom culture is a culture of respect. Shout respect at me. Respect. respect. So I got to, so, so I'm up here. I'm in the praise band. I'm with Phil. I got to respect my tone if I'm going, it should be G. No, it should be F. I got to respect my tone because we're in the kingdom. The enemy's trying to play us. Guys, he's trying to play us. 
He wants to play us. He wants our marriages broken, our families broken, our churches broken. That's what he wants. Nobody knows how to respect each other no more. We get on YouTube. We love it. Making fun of people at their expense. I don't know what's so funny about somebody falling on the ground, but it's funny. Can't wait. Can't wait to pile on. Spirit of honor in here. This is hard for me on Sunday morning. I got things to do. Somebody's talking to my ear about something to me that don't matter. The sidewalk has weeds in it. The sidewalk has weeds in it. I'm like, really? I'm about to go preach, and you want me to be concerned about the sidewalk having weeds in it. Okay? And this is where I get in trouble, Mark, because in my tone, here comes my tone. Some of you have been on the back side of this. <laughs> okay? That's not the kingdom, though. Even if they're talking to me about the weeds in the sidewalk on Sunday morning, I'm supposed to show that person respect and honor them. I'm supposed to be able to go, you know, Samantha, I'm so sorry that there's weeds out there. Let me check with some people and see if we can't get that taken care of. Will you email me on Monday so I can follow up with that? That just drains me. Just practicing it just drains me. <laughs> some of y'all go next Sunday, can't wait to mess with me. I can already tell, you little pranksters. So Jesus said, you show me honor by believing in me. John 6, 29. So the first point there in your notes talks about believing. Did I do that? Am I doing that right? I got the little, I've been everywhere. So you with me, sis? Yeah, go down to honoring God with your days real quick. Let me jump through that. Believing. Jesus told the disciples in John 6, 29, your only work, <laughs> the only work God wants from you is to believe in the one he has sent. You want to honor God with your life daily. Remember Jesus said in Luke, if any man will come after me, let him take up his cross daily. So if you did this yesterday, guess what? Control, alt, delete. You do it again. Start over. So it's a daily believing. So how can you become intentional about what you believe about Jesus? You, ha you honor God with how you believe. So when people start telling you things can't make it and people ain't going to make it and things can't happen, you just say, I just, tr I just believe to trust him. I just don't let nobody talk you out of trusting him. That's a kingdom culture mindset. And we want to create a culture in here that just believes. We're not going to come in here on Sunday morning. I'm not asking you to fake. But when somebody, you know, when you have a moment, see, part of kingdom, part of kingdom relationships is you hold me accountable. So if I say something that sounds like it's disbelief in Christ, you go, well, pastor, are you not trusting God about this area? I go, ooh, you know what? I'm right. You're, you're right. I should trust God. So Laurel just reminded me to trust God. I received that. That's the culture I'm talking about. But what we have in here is I get my feelings hurt now. Because, <laughs> and so here she go being oversaved, going to try to tell me when really I should receive it. Amen? Because daily, I have times where I, I, I disconnect from believing, trusting. So you go, so I go up and tell you my problem, and if you discern that I stop believing, you go, well, DJ, what do you believe God is doing? What do you believe is going on here? What do you believe about Jesus Christ in this situation? I've been asking people that. They come in here talking about their utilities. They come and talk about, what do you believe about Jesus can do for your utility bill before we even get started? Because if you don't believe, my help is not any good for you. Okay, I'm going to get in trouble now. I'm talking to people that come in here in this house. Off the street, I don't do that to them. But people that come in here at this house. If we're going to grow, we have to bring belief with our works. Amen. We have to bring belief with our works. Change happens when we bring belief with what we're doing. So you teachers in here, you got to believe that change is going to happen to the students before you start teaching. I believe daily. Look at that second one. The second one is attitude. So now i got my belief now, where's my attitude at? Attitude, my motives. Look, look, what, look what 1 Peter 4.9 says. Cheerfully share. Look at that. What does it say? Cheerfully share. I went to the Mexican Fiesta, and I bought some enchiladas, and they said, um, you sharing? I go, no, I'm DJ. <laughs> I'm not sharing these. <laughs> I'm not sharing these enchiladas right here. No, I'm not sharing. No, I'm not. I'm DJ Dangerfield. Nice to meet you. Who's sharing? I don't know who that is. <laughs> <All right. laughs> cheerfully, cheerfully share. I guess they can stay. <sighs> you ever had too many kids at your house? You want to eat and feed your kids, and you got four other kids in there, and you're like, oh, Lord, what are we going to do? Are we going to feed them or not? You're in the debate with your wife. Put some more rice in there. Cheerfully share. They're all here, and they're like cats. You feed them one day, they're coming back the next day. 
Like cats, here they come. You fed me yesterday. <laughs> got the whole middle school at your house. <laughs> Cheerfully share. You better get a farmhouse. Better move out in the country. They won't come out there then. You better get about 10 miles outside of town. But you live in town. They're coming. Cheerfully share your attitude, your home. When those in need have a home. When was the last time you had a good attitude and you shared your home with somebody in need? When was the last time? Don't, don't answer me. Honor God with your house. Honor God with your home. Honor God with your food. That's the kingdom culture. When's the last time somebody, you honored them? Brought them over for dinner. When's the last time? I'm not talking about behavior modification. I'm not talking about doing this. This is an inside gig. It comes from your overflow of your relationship with Christ. It's a heart thing. And I, it makes me nervous. You're more concerned about locking things than letting people in. I don't mind you locking stuff up, but who are you inviting over? Locking everything up. Nobody knows what you got because you won't let nobody in in the first place. One was in there. <laughs> Just locking everything. Shaka, 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 shaka. You're supposed to have a good. I'm not saying just do it. The piece is, where's your attitude when you do it? Right, Phil? Bite them over. And then here come their kids. You're like, oh, buddy. Oh, buddy. Put all, get your house ready. Put your stuff up that you think is valuable. Don't have your good stuff out. <laughs> One time, remember, sweetheart, we lived in Lawrence. We invited those people over our house. Their daughter came over. There. She tore our house up, breaking vases and everything. My wife was crying. <laughs> you remember that? They left that in. She said, we're never doing that again. I said, sweetheart, we got to do it again. We got to put that stuff up. Safe proof of health. They got kids. Put your stuff up. Are we doing that? Who are you inviting over? Guys, I'm serious. We don't have, no, has anybody from this church been over your house in the last month? I know some of you have, so I'm not talking to you, but I'm, you know who I'm talking to, so don't be like it. Don't be talking to me. Come on now. Where, where's this at? Who knows you in here? In your attitude, you're like, come on in. Come, yeah, I got some greens. Yeah, you make some greens. I'm over. I'm over. Well, let me say, if you make them right, let me say that. You're just going to boil them and throw them in some water, then I may not come over. Your affections. Now we're talking about the heart. Look what Isaiah said. And the Lord says, these people, they are mine. They honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me, and their worship of me is nothing but man-made rules. I'm not talking about rules. I'm talking about you bring your heart in the kingdom. You bring your heart. You're not just inviting people over. You're bringing your heart to this. This means something. If you've been doing small groups and you're feeling burnt out, I want to encourage you. If you've been, been, man, I love this. We got people in our church, man, that just be, y'all let foreign exchange students stay with you. You let people stay with you. It's just awesome stuff. We, uh, I don't want to put people's business out there, but I could tell y'all stories. There's, there's several people in here who are going, hey, we do this all the time. But sometimes you go through a season where you're like, is this really worth it? I don't see the benefit of it. We're not doing it for the benefit. This is who we are. This is the culture of the kingdom. We make pies and let people eat them, you know. We bring the pastor pies. We bring the pastor pies. 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 <laughs> I'm just kidding. And salsa. God bless you for that, sis. All right? Honoring one another. It's a, it's a hard thing. It's not just doing it to do it. It's because of your heart. You're saying, man, we need each other. Did you hear, the, you hear what everybody's been saying this morning? We're all on the same page. We, we need each other. This, hey, don't push me because I'm close to the edge. It's getting tough out here. Most of us in this room, quiet as it's kept, are living paycheck to paycheck. You ain't got to nod your head. But most of us in this room, you get your check and you start thinking about the next check. You know it's true. It's all good. Most of us are going, okay, Lord, thank you. Please let that next one come. <laughs> Please, Lord, don't let, the, don't let something happen before that next one come. And, and, and that type of living, man, it'll do something to you emotionally. And some of you aren't plugged in, and I, I'm nervous for you because it, that stuff will start rocking you. And tension. You got to disconnect from that and say, we got to just start honoring people. Paychecks are coming, they go. I'm going to start finding somebody that I can honor today. I'm going to actually receive it too. Glory to God. I've learned that now. I receive it. Don't you dare give me something. I'm taking it. God bless you. <laughs> I will. I'll go Pentecostal on you. You, get, you put some money in my pocket. I will. 
We put a gospel in our heart, but you'd be like, oh my, DJ. <laughs> I'm not received now. I used to be like, oh, no, 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 God, God takes care of me. No, 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 I don't need. Some of y'all are like that. You, you, you're well off and you don't think you need anything. Yes, you do. Somebody say amen. amen. Yes, you do. Just because this person over here seems to make more money than you don't mean you can't take them to lunch. Amen. <laughs> One time I said, Rayburn, I'm taking you to lunch. Took Rayburn to lunch, forgot my wallet. Rayburn had to pay. <laughs> yeah. I did the same thing to Phil Fewins. That's a trick I play all the time, Dr. Coates. Man, let me honor you. Let me bless you. Come on, Phil. Uh-oh. So now he asked me every time I get in the car, you got your wallet, brother? <laughs> I mean, I'm good with it, but you better have your wallet because you, you pay it for yourself. <laughs> so be careful if I ask you to lunch. Be careful. I may not really be honoring you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Lastly, let's close this thing down. I think you guys did good. God bless you for putting up with me. God bless you. Check this out. I got a little illustration here. Mrs. Baker was like, is he going to use the salt or not? <laughs> Had me running around here. Thank you for honoring me, sis. It's good stuff. I got some salt here. Salt's good. Wait, wait, man, did Chase do a good job last week, or did Chase do a good job? He, 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 he came over to my house and shared with me what he had. I said, put that up, man. I'm going to use that. I'm going to steal that stuff from you. I'm going to preach that. You, you come up with another one. I'm taking that one. I will. I'll steal your stuff now. Don't you have a good sermon idea? I do that to Dr. Coates all the time. So here's, can you put up, can you put up the next last, this is the last slide so y'all can, you, you can relax now. We're almost there. We're almost to the finish, almost to the finish line, almost to the promised land. I love this, Derek. This is where I, this is where the Lord was dealing with me this week. This is where I get in trouble. Let your, this is why, even with my preaching, I will admit, I got to get better at this. <laughs> Let your conversation always Say always. always. There's not an excuse. There's not an excuse you got for me. <laughs> Full of grace, seasoned with salt. So, so let's say you got a bad tooth or a, what do they call it, abscess or am I saying that right? Or you got it. Anybody ever had a, any, what, did I say it wrong? Abscess. See, watch your tone, DJ. <laughs> you ever have like a canker sore? A three-day canker sore for like four months, you know. Just, you can't, you know. I like ketchup and french fries, and you can't eat ketchup. Everything stings it. And so you try to drink you some salt water. Now, if I said, oh, you got, you got, you got an abscess tooth, or you got a canker sore, well, let me give you some salt for that. Hey, that'll fix it right there. You drinking that? This is how some of y'all preach the gospel. This is how some of y'all share the gospel on Facebook, and you wonder why ain't nobody. You think something's wrong with the culture. You think something's wrong with the, you think something's wrong with unsaved people. They're not the problem. The problem is actually, you're giving them a cup full of salt, ain't nobody in their right mind gonna drink that, in their right mind. You don't even drink this. I, I know, I'm not. You don't even drink this. You serving a drink that you don't even drink. You forgive yourself all the time. You just come up with scriptures and passages and just be forgiving yourself. But somebody else, you better give them a whole glass of salt. You drug addict, you better drink this, you little drug addict. <laughs> Bible says be sober-minded. And it's easy for you to correct them because that ain't the thing that you deal with, see? The thing that you deal with is when the family goes to bed and it's 2 o'clock in the morning and your desires run crazy. But God has grace for that one. I didn't get no amen, Mark. <laughs> see? And, then, and so some of the women in here are like, yeah, DJ, preach it. Two o'clock in the morning, looking at that stuff, and then you just shop, 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 overspin, overspin, overspin. But you got grace for that. You got grace for that overspending. Like that's okay. Look at all the men. Mm -hmm. Get them. <laughs> he said. He said, "Let your conversation be always full of grace." He says, "Seasoned with salt." So we're supposed to be. Now I, I, I can clean my mouth with this, and and if you're discipling somebody right now, as you know where they're at in their walk. Now, this is something very practical, so pay attention, my deeper people in here. You're discipling somebody right now, you're walking by the scripture, as you know them, you know how much salt you can give them. Now, granted, when you're discipling somebody, you can season it with salt. And Derek, this happens to me all the time. I season it with salt. They think I'm giving them this, though. This is what they see. It's really just this. You know how your coach used to do you? One more, guys. You're like, one more? I can't do one more, coach. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. So if you've entrusted your life to somebody, sometimes when they're challenging you with a kingdom principle, it feels like you're drinking this. 
But really, it's just this. You just don't know any better because you're a young pup in the faith. All right? But this is how we're supposed to be on Facebook. Ain't nobody going to drink this. So when we have our kingdom conversations, we know about content. We know what we're supposed to be talking about content, right? Amen now. Y'all know good and well we got to clean the content up, especially Dewan. But we'll talk about that later. <laughs> All right, we know the content's jacked up, but I'm talking about when we're trying to correct people, when we're debating people, when we're trying to prove a theological point. We're trying to help somebody with their lives. He says, season it with salt, not a full glass of salt. Kingdom conversation. That you can honor God that way. You're honoring God when you give somebody truth, seasoned. You're honoring God in that moment. You're honoring God when you invite people in and you show them hospitality and you're cheerful. You're honoring God. You're honoring God when you believe what he says. You're honoring him. I want you to do an evaluation. On the back of your note sheet is some discussion questions. I want you to go through them later on today. I want you to go, through those, go home and go through with your family those discussion questions. Talk it over with somebody. All right? Find out where you're at with honoring the point. And who's the point? Jesus is the point. We're going to stand up on our feet here and we're going to say a prayer and we're going to go. You guys made it. I'm proud of you. Nobody left. I'm proud of y'all. Even though I know what some, I, some of these people, I know what they was thinking, but he's talking bad about me, boy. It's all right. I won't be speaking next week, so you'll be off the hook. Here's what I want to challenge you now. Are you bringing kingdom culture with you where you go? Are you bringing a, the honoring peace? Disconnecting from disrespect. Are you honoring the point? We think it's really difficult. The devil's made us to believe it's difficult to please God. These things aren't difficult. Powered by the Spirit, these things aren't difficult. All right? This morning, I'm going to read a scripture. I'm going to pray us out of here. If you're struggling with any one of these areas and you want some prayer, I'll stay here and pray with you and believe God with you. All right? This morning, if you're saying, DJ, I want to know what it means to honor the point. I'm not doing that right now. I'm really struggling with that. All right, we're not going to go into a two-hour counseling session because I don't know what to tell you other than to pray for you. I'm not a counselor. Okay, Everybody say amen. I have to kill that in here. Some of y'all think I'm wise. I'm not very <laughs> I got some of y'all. I'm just a good preacher. That's it. I'm not, I'm not as smart as it. I'm not smart. So we're not going to sit here for two hours and all that because I have a meeting about to go on in here. What I want to do is pray with you and believe God with you that the word of God will take root, the Holy Spirit will take more affection in your heart, take more territory in your heart, and you'll live a life that says, I want to honor God with what I say, do, behave, act, think. Amen? If that's you, I want to pray with you before you get out of here. I'm going to read Romans 15, 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, I thank you for every person that's here. Help us to bring your culture with us when we leave out of here. All right? Not the culture of this world, but your culture. Help us, God. Act like you. Even with people that we disagree with, help us act like you. Help us to, to watch our affections, to protect our affections. Help us to protect what we believe about you. Help us to have a protection over our conversation so that we may honor you with our lives. We love you, Lord. But we ask that you would be with each family here. Whatever's going on in these homes that is not of you, I pray that you will start softening our hearts to start making change happen in our own homes. That we may be the people that you've called us to be. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. God bless you. See you next Sunday. I got a surprise for you next Sunday. You don't want to miss.